Hey many enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're well and I hope you're having a great day. Today we're back on Project TARDIS. So we had a little bit of a break. We had an episode on Project Sprout, which was just catching up on a few things I was doing on it. Uh, it's quite amazing how much the floor mats divided opinion, actually. It was pretty much 50-50. Um, half the camp, half the viewers, said they loved the green floor mats and keep them and it was nice contrast between the seats and the colour of the car etc and some people just couldn't stand the green floor mats and said nah get rid of them get black ones the great thing is I've got three minis they've all got floor mats in them I've just ordered some floor mats up for Project TARDIS and I've ordered just plain black floor mats for that so if I want to swap them around um, yeah, I have the luxury of having more than one Mini, so um, yeah, uh, I thought I'd mention the floor mats actually. So there are some floor mats in TARDIS and I was in two minds whether to put these back in. I'm certainly going to keep hold of them. Now, I think these are quite rare. So they're Canon, uh, they say reversible car mats, but they're just the same on both sides, but they're Canon floor mats. Now, I think Canon are still around and they make floor mats. But I'm pretty sure you can't get them with the mini logos or the, the mini script on them there. I did see a set come up on Facebook as someone was saying they were rare. So <clears throat> I'll probably give them a good clean up. Um, and I don't know whether I'll use them. I mean, I'm sure the black carpet ones will be just as nice. But um, yeah, again, it's a nice original to bit to have on TARDIS. Um, I thought I'd mention as well, so in this week's episode, there's a bit, bits and bobs really. I, what do I do? I can't even remember. We're gonna uh, fit the wheel arches on. We're gonna uh, fit a new radiator and bleed the cooling system up. As you'd have seen in the last episode, the radiator was leaking. Uh, so uh, it's actually a bit of wall art on the wall at the back now. I was thinking about getting a clock mechanism with like white arms and making a clock out of a radiator. I don't think I've seen that before. Um, we're gonna fit the headlights in, fit the grill in, give it a bit of a polish up. And as you can see, I'm ahead in the video. So it is very, very nearly finished. Anyway, let me stop waffling on. Let's get straight in to this week's episode. Thanks for tuning back in. Right, not much to do then. As you'd have seen in the previous video, the radiator was leaking, so that delayed me a little bit with getting the engine side of things back together, but it does mean I could start it briefly and get it in and out of the workshop, so I've been able to get some other stuff done on um, Project Sprout. Um, we're almost to the point where the only thing left to do is bonnet on and interior in, so it's going to be finished pretty soon. So I ordered up a new radiator. Um, to be honest, I just got one off eBay. Um, sometimes it is cheaper like that. So I'd usually use mini spares. I, I get most of my parts from mini spares, but sometimes by the time you add postage for one item off, on mini spares, it's um, more cost effective just to go on eBay. Uh, you obviously just have to check the quality. So we've got a new radiator. Um, it's fine, looks perfectly okay to me. Um, it is a three core radiator. So if you ever want to know what the difference is, when you look down inside, that has three rows of cooling channels. Um, you can get two core radiators, which would have been on earlier cars. I'm not sure whether this should have would have originally had a three core radiator. Um, it looks, I think it's got a three core radiator now. Yes, so again, there are three rows of coolant pipes, which run through the fins of the radiator. So obviously the more, co the more cores you have, the more efficient the cooling is. So, Maybe that radiator has been replaced, or if it is original, it would have been three core. I'm sure someone will know. So uh, let me get the radiator on. I'm not sure whether I'll time lapse this. I probably won't because I'm a little bit struggling for space at the moment, but it's pre pretty simple, really. Um, top two bolts onto the radiator cowling. We'll take that off. Um, the bottom bolts through the bottom there. 
the bottom hose luckily on something like this and because we haven't got the bonnet on it's pretty easy to get to down the back there that should give me enough clearance then just to push it to the side and slide it out with the fan in place and then we've got to swap the cowling over so bear with me let me get the radiator out right so that's the radiator out that literally did only take me probably three minutes um, so there's the radiators side by side. Um, I've not really looked hard for where this one was leaking, but it's a shame because I cleaned that radiator up really, really nicely, didn't I? Um, I think it was leaking from this end because I thought it might be where I tried to repair the fins, but either way, you know, that's life. So first thing we want to do, although it's only a mini radiator, there's not usually a great deal of difference if it's a later FPI, it might have a temperature sensor fan switch in the bottom here, um, but they're pretty much much of a muchness. The only thing you will notice is that are very similar. Just look, so this is the, I think it's the original radiator. Look at how dense and close the fins are in here compared to this. So they're a lot wider apart, I think. That is purely just cost saving. So I think it'll still be a copper core radiator. Um, so obviously it's expensive. So there is less fin material on these. That means in theory, it won't cool as well as this does because this just has a larger surface area because it's got more metal in there. I'm sure it won't be a problem on something like this, something like a one litre automatic. Um, and there could be the argument that this one, because there's less interruption, it will allow more airflow with it. So it might have less surface area, but greater airflow. I'm not gonna sit here and do the maths anyway. Let's get the cowling put back on. Um, I did paint this cowling up really nicely and I managed to scratch it a couple of times. Now, sometimes with restorations, you get to the point when it's all nice and clean like that and tidy, you start putting things back together and you do scratch and scrape the odd bit. Um, if it was a concourse car, I'd be cleaning that up and spraying it again, but I just want to get it done now. I'll touch up these little bits when they're on the car. Um, and the other thing, like I say, it very, very quick to take the radiator out. No problems at all. They were all new nuts and bolts. The bolts that weren't new had a bit of anti-seize compound on them. Um, and you'd have seen me mention on probably the previous video with a subframe. Some of this stuff I do, like the subframe, where I cavity wax the inside of the subframe and I say on that video, that's gonna last another 30 years. It'll probably last longer than that. Um, and some of this stuff I grease up and that, you just, it's not necessarily necessary but it does when you've got to take things apart like this things do go wrong and you might have to take it apart again and things don't always go to plan that little bit of extra time getting new nuts and bolts cleaning up the threads making sure the thread hole is clear using a bit of anti-seize compound etc just makes your life so much easier so let's get the cowling on, let's get the fan back in, or the radiator back in, and then we can fill it up with coolant and bleed the cooling system. Right, radiator's on. Obviously we're filled up with coolant at the moment. It's a 50-50 mix of antifreeze. Um, it's been running for about 10 minutes. So how can we tell that the cooling system has bled up? One, you need to put the heater on hot so you get flow through the matrix. And you should just be able to feel by hand so that's the pipe into the matrix, that's the pipe out of the matrix, or could be vice versa actually. Can't think the way the flow is of coolant. Either way, there's hot, it's hot both sides, which means it flows through the matrix okay. You can go inside, turn the heater on and feel whether it feels hot. Um, so, how do you check whether the thermostat's opened with the cap off like this? If we give it a little rev, we should be able to see flow through the radiator. So the thermostat's currently open. We can see flow through the radiator. Right, I'm just putting these headlamp bulbs in uh, and I'm using the proper rivets, which I've got from Mini Spare. So they're quite a long, 
fat rivet. Uh, you have to pull them through quite far to get them in. Um, but what I've noticed, they take a real lot of effort to pull the rivet through. And when they come, when it breaks off, when it comes off, it shoots it off like a missile. It's like a bullet. Doesn't do it all the time. Let me see if I can capture it with this one. It, it's, it shoots out the back here like a bullet out of a gun. So you have to be quite careful. First time it did it, it scared the life out of me. So as you can see, it takes quite a bit of effort. <coughs> Whoa. That time it didn't come out. Let's try another one. I also notice they don't make the hole, they've got the indentation in the rubber for the rivet to go through, but they don't actually make the hole for you. What I'm actually doing is just putting the bit of grease in the rivet, because obviously it goes through a hole. So a bit of grease on there, when that tightens up, it'll fill the hole up with grease between the rivet. See if this one goes. No, it didn't shoot it out again. I'm being lucky. Last one to try. Oh, I didn't. The other side, a couple of them, they just shot out the back of the rivet gun like a missile. Um, luckily, just straight into the workbench, so no damage caused, but be careful. Right, well that's the headlamps in. The front end is pretty much done now. There is just the grill to go, which is quite a milestone of a moment, because the grill was one of the first bits are restored. So putting it back on kind of marks a milestone. We are nearly finished. I've got the rest of the arches to go on. Um, I've got to put the lights in the back. I've got to put the aerial on. Obviously I need to address the paint issues on the boot yet. That might end up having to be painted and put the interior in. I almost feel a bit sad. One, I want it really, I really, really want it done because um, I just want to start using it and I want to start enjoying the other minis as well rather than just working on them. But yeah, it's been a lot of hard work and effort and it's coming to an end. Right, so next job on the mini is to get all the wheel arches on. I've only got one arch on at the moment. Um, but before the arches go on, we're going to compound the bodywork purely because if I try compounding it with the arches on I'll get compound on the arches and it just looks messy then so uh, we're using two compounds we're going to start with a G3 uh, cutting compound we're going to finish with a G10 and then we've got G, G3 wax to go on there as well um, the paint on this a uh, few feet looks really really good actually it's a lovely color um, but it is a little bit faded it does need compounding a bit and a bit of polishing so let me come back to you once I've got so we're going to compound this and then we'll wax inside the arch line and then the arches will get riveted on right I've decided to come inside because it's too hot outside I've removed I've done that rear quarter panel now. I've removed the door handle so I can get inside here properly for compounding, machine polishing. Um, and the handle, I wasn't gonna repaint them, but 
what the hell, I've taken all the lock mechanism apart and they'll get done in satin black. Right, um, that's that side all mopped now. This arch is on. I, I hate fitting wheel arches, like especially those type, because they're, I mean, they're not expensive, they're only like 20 quid, but they never quite fit properly. I always end up having to get the heat gun out, heating them up a little bit so you can bend them a little bit. Um, and then the next thing is getting the rivets in. Um, now, unlike the front arches where the holes are inlay, in, elongated on the front, you can get around the back just to fit a washer to reduce the size of the hole. On the rear, you can't. So, um, yeah, and I slipped with the rivet gun, put a few chips in the paint. <laughs> I should have masked it up a bit more first. Um, a lot of people have trouble with these trims because they come in the box bent over at 180 degrees and you can never get them straight again. Well, you can because um, I've got this one straight, but that, that's literally been, I've straightened it out up in the loft and it's sat up there for sort of nine months since I, is it nine months? Might be six months, sat up there for six months so it has finally gone straight and gone on okay. The other thing I've done, so I fitted these. These are not the original mirrors. Uh, I couldn't fit the original ones because they drilled new holes in the door. So these are Tex mirrors. Um, and again, thanks to my mate Paul Jeffries who put me onto them. I didn't realize they'd done them because it did have chrome mirrors on it, but they do exactly the same Tex ones in satin black. Um, so, as I say, there are a couple of extra holes under there, but that covers that up nicely. So, um, yeah, pretty pleased. I've just got to get the other side done now. But that's taken me flipping ages, it has. Well, Mini Enthusiasts, it must be time for another Reader's Drives. And this week's Mini belongs to Peter Demetriou who's a long-term viewer and subscriber to the channel. So thanks for your loyalty, Peter. He's owned this special Mini for three years now. It's a Mini 30, which was converted by John Cooper Garages only two weeks after registration. It has twin SUs, a Janspeed modified head, long center branch exhaust manifold, and it drives very well indeed. Peter didn't realise how rare the car was. He's only ever seen two more. I don't think there can be many more than that, to be honest. It's a 998cc, but you wouldn't think it driving along. A 998 nicely tuned small bore engine can be just as much fun to drive as a 1275. It does have areas that need attention, paint fade in places, and the wiring needs sorting as it's been chopped and added to over the years. Peter plans to rewire the car and respray it in the coming years. And just thanks for being a loyal viewer, Peter, and thanks for letting us feature your car. It really does look fantastic, and I'm sure you're going to make it look really great and improve it. These early John Cooper conversions are really rare and they were certainly an expensive conversion back in the day. So it's really great to feature one on the channel and hopefully, Peter, I'd love to see it at shows sometime. Thanks for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like your car featured on Reader's Drives, drop me an email. My email address is in the description and we'll see what we can do.